As gold rush enthusiasts, we are familiar with seeing Tony Beats lead his gold mine, usually with his son Kevin by his side. However, in Gold Rush Season 14, viewers quickly notice Kevin's absence, and it noticeably affects his father. In Episode 1, Kevin's siblings step in to fill his role, causing confusion among many viewers wondering where he is. However, there's a twist in the story as Kevin is set to make a comeback in season 14 of Gold Rush to run the entire mining process. Join us as we see how Kevin Beats returns to overtake the whole Gold Rush operation. The return of Kevin Beats Kevin Beats comes back with a vengeance in season 14. His year off wasn't simply due to exhaustion. Love has played a starring role in this since being with Faith in 2019. Kevin longed for private time in the quiet, away from the booming of the mine, choosing quality time with his beloved over the alluring shine of gold. Yet the siren call of the Klondike proved too strong. The mists of the hiatus dissipated, revealing a dusted-off Kevin, raring to go back into the family fray. His coming back wasn't just a cameo role but a whole plunge into the Beats mining whirlpool. Father and son, home again on the gold-drenched field of battle, promised even more drama, victories, and nail-biting showdowns in the harsh valley of the Klondike. Kevin did announce in Season 14, Episode 1 of Gold Rush, that he intended to leave mining after nine years. The company has not officially stated why he is leaving, but he communicated it to his father through video chat. Kevin told his family that he and Faith Tang were thinking of taking the year off from mining to do some hobbies like gardening and home improvement. Tony did not believe this. Disappointed, Min and Tony expressed their anxiety about finding a replacement for Kevin. While Tony was gone, he realized how important it was to keep someone in Kevin's place, and although they were worried, they recognized that Kevin's decision was very clear and they would have to accept it and work with it. Tony's desire to keep control within the family was born in later episodes of Gold Rush. To accomplish this, he hired his daughter, Monica, to run the factory while Kevin was away. However, Kevin is on the brink of making a comeback. Tony's son Kevin is set to return to the scene, lending a hand to save the family's business. Episode 14 appropriately titled Desperate Cry for Help, provides a glimpse into the upcoming events, stating Tony's son Kevin returns to help save the family business. Meanwhile, Parker rushes against time to repair burst damage and keep the important Dominion Creek gold operations working smoothly as wildfires threaten to derail Rick's progress before he can haul in his first bench. Since joining the gold rush in season six alongside his father, Kevin has been an important and consistent program component. His commitment to the mining industry has been both persistent and rigorous. Kevin decides to leave because he wants a simpler life and will be taking a break from mining for a while. Taking such a break may allow him to gain perspective on life and uncover a fresh drive to re-engage in the game. Journey so far, it was in 2010 that a group of rough and tumble miners led by the legendary Tony Beats, trekked to the Klondike to make their fortunes. Tony was a seasoned industry veteran with many years under his belt. With him, his sons Kevin and Mike, and a crew of old-timers, different in personality and temperament, but united in spirit, the first few seasons were survival lessons. They followed the miners as they fought the elements, from blistering cold to treacherous river crossings. They fought with capricious machinery, learned to read the land like a book, and faced the ever-present possibility of equipment breakage and ruin. Every nugget dug up was a hard-won victory, and every failure was a wound in the gut. However, it wasn't only about the gold. Gold Rush explores the miners' lives, examining their dreams and anxieties, hope and fear, and the friendships forged in the hellish fire. Tony's bristling exterior emerged as he taught his sons. Kevin became a leader rather than a man of quiet determination, and the rapport between crew members was stress-tested by rivalry, envy, and the perennial press of the gold rush. 
Later, as the seasons advanced, the area covered by the gold rush grew larger and larger. The beats began venturing off their Paradise Hill claim and tackled new challenges, such as dredging operations and battling rival miners Todd Hoffman and Parker Schnabel. There were always new faces, new conflicts, and new discoveries each season. Young entrepreneur Parker and seasoned miner Todd brought new tech and business savvy to the game. Parker and Tummy's epic rivalries kept the viewers glued to the edge of their seats, and Todd's flair for the dramatic didn't leave anyone bored. But all the while, the gold was the unattainable prize. The gold rush is not a fairy tale in which everyone gets rich. The crushing disappointment of empty pans, the financial burdens of failed ventures, and the effects of the relentless drive for gold. However, there are also times of unadulterated happiness, the thrill of digging up a chunky nugget, the feeling of accomplishment from conquering a technical problem, and the delight when the entire team experiences the sweet taste of victory. Then what exactly have these miners found? Together, they've dug up hundreds of millions of dollars in gold, from small flakes to big nuggets. From traditional sluicing to high-tech dredging, they've tried all kinds of mining techniques. They've stepped into new frontiers, plunged deeper into the frozen embrace of the Klondike, and expanded the limits of what's possible in this unforgiving place. This isn't limited to the icy north, however. In spin-off series like Gold Rush, with Whitewater, people were taken to the jungles of Viana, where miners fought the treacherous rivers and scorching heat in search of gold. Gold Rush. Alaska widened the scope, revealing the challenge and glory of mining in the Alaskan wilderness. The spin-offs widened the show's net, introducing new characters, scenery, and mining methods, adding to the Gold Rush universe. As we head into the future of the Gold Rush, the question remains, Will the gold keep flowing? Will new rivals emerge, or will old allies make amends? Golden dreams, however, one thing is certain. The Klondike still has its secrets, and the miners won't give up until they find them. Treasures found in seasons in all their 12 seasons treasures. Some are legumes, but some shimmer brighter than others. Here are a few. The Beats Bonanza. Tommy Beats, the haggard king powering over Paradise Hill, was no lucky star. With all his hard work and sweat, he was the master of efficiency, wringing ounces out of nothing. However, in season two, his dredge, Goliath, took a big bite out of a rich vein that sent a 58-ounce nugget flying out of its mouth onto the ground, the biggest ever seen on the show. That sparkling behemoth brought Tony to his knees in a prayer to the gold gods which concluded with a roar that echoed across the valley. It was a watershed, demonstrating that even the most experienced miner can find a fortune overnight. Parker's payday. Parker Schnabel's youth wasn't a hindrance, it was a fire hose. He did so with technology expertise and the ability to take risks, which could have seen him frozen out more quickly than the Yukon River in December. But for Parker, everything turned to gold. In the third season, his group found a 76-ounce giant on Scribner Creek. It wasn't just gold, it was confirmation that a greenhorn could scoop out all the old rules of the Klondike. The Hoffman heist, Todd Hoffman, a dreamer with a knack for the stage, didn't mind stirring up feathers. His claim, Quartz Creek, was an Adams combo of gold and drama. But season four brought a finding that rocked the Klondike to its core. For example, a 105-ounce monster nicknamed the Terminator was discovered, but strangely enough, it was not in the creek, but hidden in a dump bag on Hoffman's property. Statements, blame, and feuds flew back and forth between the accuser and the accused. Witnesses turned star witnesses, and the gold rush became a gold rush for justice. The curse of the orphan claim because the Dakota boys, Fred and Myrtle, were of Klondike royalty, as their family has opened the land for generations. But their orphan claim held a bitter secret, an unlucky string of misfortunes that struck anyone who dared touch it. Now comes Dave Turin, 
a long path energy salvager happy to accept the challenge. One of the bold exceptions is in season 5, when he defies the curse, coming up with a 75 ounce beauty, proving that fortune sometimes favors the brave. The dredge of destiny, Tummy Beats was small on fancy gadgets, but the siren call of untapped ground was too much. The huge and volatile Monica is no ordinary dredge. In season 6, she ate frozen Eureka Creek, spitting out gold like a dragon with a hoard. It wasn't just about ounces. Her arrival was also a sign of Tony's ambition, a bet that would change the nature of the Klondike game. The Frozen Phoenix The gold-hearted underdog, Rick Ness, wasn't afraid to take risks. But the other side had already picked his claim, Scridner Creek, clean. Rick wasn't ready to throw in the towel. In Season 7, he found a secret vein frozen in time, buried deep and untouched for centuries. The 43-ounce wonder Scribner Phoenix proves that, given perseverance, the coldest of gold veins can be thawed. The Curse of the Nugget King The arrival in Season 8 of the flamboyant newcomer Freddy Dodge, with his magic touch as a gold finder, promised to turn the page on the rule book of the Klondike. His claim? Eureka Gulch was bedded with gold-laden gravel, yet it also had something that appeared to be a curse. The crew endured accidents, the machinery coughed its last, and even Freddy's enthusiastic optimism began to dim. But then the curse broke. Even curses can be outstripped by guts and a little luck. A 62-ounce beauty, the so-called dodgeball nugget, emerged from the depths. The return of the Terminator, never a quitter, Todd Hoffman returned in a blaze of glory in season 10. This time, he wasn't chasing ghosts of Nugget's past, but facing a new frontier, Nome, Alaska. They set off on the cold, dangerous Bering Sea waters, looking for riches buried in its depths. His crew, a bunch of age-old, seasoned miners and fresh-faced rookies, couldn't have been more mobbly. And, wouldn't you know it, the gold god smiled. The next moment, his dredge came up with a 40 ouncer. It confirmed that even on foreign territory, the Terminator could still bite. The legacy of the White Water Woman, Tony's daughter, Monica Beats, couldn't bear to watch from the sidelines. Both dangerous and difficult jobs. In season 11, she succeeded in taking control of the Eureka dredge, which is a difficult thing for anyone to do, let alone a woman in a man's world. But with her soft determination and keen mind, Monica rode the dredge through the treacherous pack ice and mechanical meltdowns. Her crowning achievement? A fabulous 54-ounce beauty, an appropriate celebration of her skill and accomplishments, and a testament to the fact that the Klondike, once a man's world, had indeed become a place paved with gold that any pair of hands could mine, even those of daughters. Thanks for watching. Like this video and subscribe for more. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos.